Hello, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to our case study presentation on the OWL bus by Jane Vanderberg and Samuel Matthews. The OWL bus was created in 2009 in Seoul, South Korea, after a public transit subsidiary of the South Korean government noticed issues of late night passengers unable to safely return home to more suburban areas after a night on the town, a drink with friends, or after a busy night at work. It is appropriately named the OWL bus because of its only operation from midnight to 5 a.m., similar to an owl-like creature, seven nights a week, and also because of its yellow eyes glowing in the front of the vehicle. Passengers of the OWL bus largely consist of workers with irregular work schedules, those enjoying a night out on the town, and others, mostly those in mid to lower income levels. In order to better understand what the OWL bus is to the people of Seoul, South Korea, and what its movements look like, here is a video from a local South Korean news station. The Seoul Metropolitan Government has officially launched a new bus service that will be operating in the wee hours from midnight to 5 a.m. every day. While most are in favour of the so-called OWL buses, there are those who are not. Connie Lee has more. It's a little past midnight, and the first night bus of the day is off. This N37 will be making more than a dozen stops before it ends its route at 5 a.m. Branded as the OWL bus, these night buses shine its OWL logo on the front and side to signal their nighttime duty. The city of Seoul is currently running two night bus routes in a trial run, but come Friday, seven more routes will be added to the list making it nine routes in total. The trial run of the first two routes was a success, with more than 2,000 passengers using the bus each day. It's past 2 a.m. here in Seoul, but as you can see behind me, this night bus is full of passengers. I'm using the night bus for the first time today after hanging out with friends. I think it's great and convenient. The bus stops near my house, and it's also cheaper than taking a taxi. It costs 1,851, or about $1.70, much cheaper than taking a taxi, which has a starting rate of about $2.60 after midnight. In a survey, the government found that 88% of Seoul residents are in favor of having more of these buses, but there are also those who are not so pleased. For taxi drivers like us that get a lot of business in the late hours, these new buses are really going to affect our business. Government officials, however, disagree. The people who use the night buses are different from those who take taxis. Passengers who don't mind the waiting time will take the night buses. But those who want to get to their destinations quickly will take taxis. So we don't think taxi drivers will be that affected. The wait for each bus could in fact be pretty long, 40 to 45 minutes on average. And as safety is a concern, especially late at night, L bus drivers can only drive under the speed limit of 70 kilometers an hour, and they cannot have worked during the day. Connie Lee, Arirang News. Prior to the OWL bus, there were very few safe and financially sound options to return to suburban areas from the city late at night. It could cost up to $9 a person to travel from the city to more residential areas at night. Additionally, prices were not well regulated, and since there is such a high demand for taxis and other methods of transportation, drivers would charge illegal fares and double or triple their cost because they knew the consumer was desperate and would pay it in order to get home safely. There's also a shortage of police officers in Seoul, South Korea, so it's difficult to ensure the safety of passengers in these illegal cabs. It became clear that the government needed to add some night transportation options to their public transit route since the subway and other bus routes were not an option at this time. After operating a call center and blog to better hear the voices of concerned citizens, the government decided to try out a night bus route. 
In April of 2013, they opened up a two late night bus routes as a direct result of concerned votes from the citizens of Seoul, South Korea. They ran a six month trial of the service in which over 220,000 people used the AL bus service. This trial was how they measured what the route should permanently be. Citizens suggested that this late night bus service should have a name to it so that it would be more user friendly and have a stronger brand, brand awareness as it started. After a vote, Albus was decided due to its nocturnal nature of the animal. In order to determine what best bus routes would be from the consumer's perspective, the Seoul government used data analytics from smartphones and call volume to target the best routes possible. The Seoul government accessed call volumes and color-coded maps based on the highest call volume data. Then, using that data to determine the most popular stops or based on the trial routes, they traced the heaviest call volumes at stops where passengers would disembark to go home. So, using the color-coded regions on the map and hotspots of call volumes and different stops, they came up with nine distinct bus routes that would be most beneficial for their passengers that would link them in a radial shape to hubs in the city in the most outlying suburban regions. The following video will demonstrate how big data was used to formulate these night bus routes. Regarding Seoul City's introduction of the night owl service is that the city used big data in the planning of the late night bus routes. Seoul City already had a world-class public transportation service, but it needed to design the late-night bus routes to meet the demands of potential passengers without spending excessive amounts of money on customer surveys. To do so, Seoul City used big data technology, the applicability of which was a hot topic at home and abroad. Driven by this trend, Seoul City launched a big data analytics project. Now, let's take a closer look at how Seoul City used big data in designing and operating its late-night bus routes. The most important factor in introducing the late-night bus service was accurately identifying the destination of potential users. To determine user demand accurately, Seoul City used floating population information provided by the mobile carrier KT and taxi trip destinations. To elaborate, Seoul City analyzed phone use data collected from KT mobile phone subscribers over a period of one month and taxi trip destination data collected over a period of seven days. In total, it analyzed three billion items of data created by KT mobile phone subscribers over a period of one month, or around 100 million items of data a day, to ensure data accuracy. The data collected from cell phone communications included departure data, which refers to data on where cell phones were used, and destination data, which refers to billing address data. To do so, Seoul City signed an MOU with the mobile carrier KT to receive the data it needed without sacrificing the privacy of KT cell phone subscribers. The data on taxi trip destinations were collected using digital tachographs installed in taxis. Now, let's take a look at how Seoul City used big data to design the late night bus routes. The Bus Policy Division, which is responsible for late-night bus management, created late-night bus route design drafts based on public transportation information. It created the bus route designs by analyzing big data related to traffic volume on arterial roads, traffic volume, and transportation card use, collecting citizens' opinions via social networking services, and conducting surveys on the floating population size in major areas late at night. Next. The Bus Policy Division consulted with the Data and Statistics Division to verify the practicality of the drafts by comparing two types of drafts, one based on mobile phone communication big data collected by KT, and the other based on taxi trip destination data. Let's take a closer look at the process. Finally, Seoul City mapped the population density during late night hours using the data on cell phone subscribers provided by KT. It then compared that information with the bus route design draft to optimize the routes and finalize the route design by adjusting the bus intervals and stops. After completing the route map, Seoul City made a floating population distribution chart by analyzing the destinations of taxi trips taken by citizens at night. It then compared the distribution chart with the previous route design draft and analyzed the distance of each route and population density of each area to revise the routes so that they serve the most densely populated areas. 
Following the comparative analysis of the late-night bus route drafts, Soul City analyzed seven routes and revised five of them to finalize the route design. According to the blog, what does big data have to do with an owl? By utilizing only big data with outfield surveys, nine late bus routes, so-called owl bus routes, were designed and they were currently operating between midnight and five o'clock in the morning in Seoul, South Korea. Presented are a couple additional numbers and facts regarding the owl bus. About three billion mobile call logs and five million taxi ride data were used to plan the transit route of the owl bus. 80 of 100 average citizens replied satisfactory after using the owl bus. Roughly 7,900 passengers use the owl bus per night. There's roughly about 2.3 million less car trips per year after using the owl bus. There's about 500 metric tons reduced in greenhouse gas emissions per year with the owl bus in place, and about 13 million sphere savings concluded after the owl bus. The following slide depicts a user's first time use with the owl bus transportation system. On her way home, Abigail is standing at a bus stop. So I'm waiting for the night owl bus and this is my first time to take it and I think it's a really good system because it's pretty hard to get home late at night so it's good that they introduced this. Seoul has recently begun operating late night bus lines. Running from midnight to 5 a.m. the night lines have N in front of their route numbers and only cost 2,000 won, approximately $2. The late night bus lines are providing a much needed affordable service to people whose options have always been limited to cabs late at night. So I feel great tonight and it's really nice walking at night time and shopping in Korea, especially on when the weather's so great out and I just really enjoy Korean life. Abigail plans to stay in Korea longer and enjoy more of it. In October, the Korea Tourist Police Department was launched. Mainly comprised of police officers proficient in multiple languages, the department will be stationed in prime tourist attractions to reduce illegal activities, such as overcharging foreign tourists. The annual number of foreign visitors to Korea exceeded 10 million last year. The high level of safety measures and the improvement of tourism services will continue to rise in the coming years. Uh, we are going to crack down on crimes such as illegal taxi vans, overcharging vendors, and unauthorized guys. If you need some help, just find us. We are in Myeongdong, Hongdae, Itaewon, and Insadong. In a four-year period from 2009 to 2013, over 1,735,000 people used the ALBAs. This meant that about 7,000 people used it on an average day. Under the previous fares, passengers would be anywhere between 9 to 14 US dollars per taxi ride from the city to the suburban regions. It now costs passengers a $1.50 flat rate to take the owl bus routes to any location. Since most of, the, most of the passengers are students, workers, or partiers, this inexpensive rate is very appealing to them. Additionally, more police officers have been added to patrol the areas around the bus stops, initiating a safe return from the owl bus stop to home as well. It has become such a popular and effective tool in Seoul that other cities in Asia have requested what is known as the Albus Manual and are trying to implement similar